All right, so in this problem, we are told a shop sign weighing 250 newtons is supported by a uniform 155 newton beam as shown in the figure. Find the tension in the guy wire and the horizontal vertical forces exerted by the hinge on the beam. So I went ahead and drew the figure here. So what we have is a um, right some wire here that's going to have some tension that's holding up this sign and this uh, beam here, right? And we know that there's going to be a hinge right here, and it's going to exert some uh, forces. So the first thing we always want to do when dealing with a problem like this is to draw the free body diagram. So we know the sign is going to weigh 250 newtons. So we know there's going to be a force of 250 newtons that's going to point downwards, right, due to the force of gravity. The next force that we want to label is the force of tension, which we know is going to act this way. So we can call that F of T. Right, because we know the force of tension is going to have to point up because it can't be in compression, right? So we know it's going to point up to the top left and hold this sign up. Uh, another thing that we know is this beam, right? So, yeah, so this beam right here, right? This is our beam. And we know this is going to have some weight. So, uh, the center of gravity or the CG we know is going to be the middle. So, that's the point at which we draw the force due to gravity. So, we know this is going to be equal to. Uh, 155 newtons, right? They tell us that, right? Because they say supported by a uniform 155 newton beam. And then we're also going to have uh, the force due to the hinge. So you could call this FH. That's what I'm going to call it. The force due to the hinge, right? Obviously, this is going to have an X and Y component here. So let me kind of show it like that. Uh, and we, we're, I'm guessing it's going to point up to the top left, right? And that should make sense because it's going to have to hold all this stuff. So, uh, it's going to obviously, another way to know it points to the right, right, this way, is the force of tension points to the left, and it's the only force pointing to the left. So I know that this uh, force is going to point to the right to cancel that out. So this right here is uh, every force labeled. So now that we've got that, let's talk about how we're actually going to solve this. So the way we're going to solve it is by summing the torque, um, right, so we're going to sum the torque at a point. So the point we're going to sum it is relative to this point right here. The reason we're doing that is when you sum the torque, you can eliminate one of the unknowns you have in your equation or in your system, right? Because notice our two unknowns are f of t and f of h. If I sum the torque at this point, it'll get rid of f of h, leaving me to solve for f of t. Now, the reason that works is we know torque, the formula for it, is force times distance times the sine of theta, okay? Now, if we looked at the torque due to f h, right, on the hinge, if we sum the torque at that point, the distance between that force, right, and the hinge or the point of rotation where we're uh, summing it at is zero, right? Therefore, the torque due to that would be zero, meaning it would be eliminated from the terms when we solve it. So hopefully that makes sense, um, but you'll see it in action in a second. So I know the sum of the torque equals zero because this system isn't moving, it's at rest, right? So there's no uh, angular acceleration, meaning torque would be zero. Uh, and then what are the different instances of torque? So there's four forces here, so we're going to uh, add them all up, right? Because the sum of the torque equals zero, so we're going to sum up the torque now. So uh, we're going to have the torque due to, and I'm going to label this, or this is actually, we'll just call this the, or this is a window sign, right? Or what is this, a shop sign? So we'll say the torque due to the sign. And uh, another thing to keep in mind when you sum these if the force causes it to rotate in a positive direction, or not a positive direction, if it causes it to rotate in a clockwise direction, we count the torque as positive. If it causes it to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, we call it negative. So you can see this sign right here is going to, right, this is our point of rotation. So it's going to pull it like this in a circle. Therefore, it's clockwise. Therefore, that one is positive. Uh, but notice uh, the, the force due to the tension, or the torque, sorry, we'll call it TT. We know that this one's actually going to be negative. The reason that is, is it goes around like this, right? The force is going to pull it this way, and it would rotate uh, counterclockwise. So this is actually minus. Uh, and then we also have the force due to, we'll say this is the um, this is the beam, right? So we'll say the torque due to the beam, that's going to be positive because it'll m make it rotate in a clockwise direction. Uh, and then we have the torque due to the hinge, we'll say. And I can add that because... It's just right through it, so it doesn't actually make it rotate, but I'll just show you that in a second. So starting off with the torque due to the sign. So 
Another thing we have to do when we solve this is by labeling, uh, or actually we don't really need to do that, never mind. So starting off, the torque, or the formula for it, is equal to force times distance times the sine of theta, okay? So what is the force? So we're doing the sine, so the force on the sine is the weight, which is 250 newtons, times the distance. So the distance of the lever arm, which is right here, right, to our force, is right along here so what is this distance well it's 1.7 meters now if our if our force is perpendicular to the lever arm which in this case it is uh basically actually let me just explain this so what theta is in this formula is the angle between the lever arm and the direction of the force so the lever arm is kind of where it connects here like this this is the force pointing straight down therefore the angle between them would be a 90 degree angle right because this goes down and this is perpendicular to it. So if that's 90 degrees, which is what theta was, the sine of 90 is just 1. So really we can just ignore that sine of theta part. So if the force is ever perpendicular to the lever arm, you just ignore that and uh, because it would just be the sine of 90, which is just 1. So yeah. Now let's do the torque due to the tension. Uh, right? We don't know what this value is, so we're just going to call the force F of T, right? because that's our force. Now the distance from it, you take it from where it originates, right? So we know the force is gonna point this way like this. So the point at which it originates, the distance from it, right, is 1.35 meters. So 1.35 meters. Now in this case, since it's not perpendicular, we actually have to do the angle. So as I said before, it's the angle between the lever arm right here and the direction of the force. So the angle between the two is given to us. It's really uh, just 35 degrees. So Force goes this way, lever arm is here, so 35 degrees. So sine of 35. Next we'll do the torque due to the beam. So once again, the force uh, for this one is 155 newtons. Uh, the distance is right to the like tail of the force is uh, one point, let me see how we get this. So uh, right, they don't give it to us explicitly, but I know that this whole distance is 1.7 meters, okay? So halfway to it, since this is half of it, right? It's in the center of it. We know uh, 1.7 divided by two, that should be 0.85, let me just check. Yeah, so 0.85. So halfway in between this is 0.85, therefore this distance, which is what we're looking for, is 0.85. So 0.85, once again, the sine of theta, this would just be 90, since it's perpendicular, so we can ignore that. And then the torque due to the hinge, right? Keep in mind we have the force due to the hinge times the distance, but it's right on top of it. You can see that right there. Therefore, the distance is zero, making this whole thing zero. So really this is zero. Uh, and so what you should see is this eliminates that force, meaning when we add all these up and set it equal to zero, the only force left is the force due to tension. So we can actually just solve for it. So uh, the way I'm gonna do this is move this, to, uh, move this to the other side. So we have the torque due to the tension is the torque due to the sine plus the torque due to the beam, right? And then this is just zero, so we can ignore it. So plugging this in, we have FT 1.35 sine of 35 equals 215 times 1.70 plus 155 times 0.85, right? You would just divide both sides by this uh, to get F of T by itself, so we can solve for it. So 215 times 1.70 plus 155 times 0.85 divided by 1.35 times the sine of 35. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's just go ahead and plug this in now. 215 times 1.70 plus 155 times 0.85 divided by 1.35 times the sine of 35. And when you do this, you're going to get an answer equal to 642, 642.17 newtons. So you can just round this to 642. We'll just go to the whole number, actually. So 642 newtons, that's going to be the force uh, due to tension in this cable. So uh, hopefully that made sense. So in your... For this problem, they want us to find that. That's one of the things. Uh, and in the next part, we're going to find uh, the horizontal and vertical forces exerted by this 
uh, exerted by the hinge, right? So the way we do this now, uh, we don't actually have to sum up the torque. We're just going to sum the forces. Because I know this is the only force remaining in this system, so I can just sum the forces in the x and the y to find its components, right? Since we know every other force. And then once I get the components, I can just combine them, uh, right? And that's what they want us to find. The horizontal and vertical forces exerted by the hinge. So they're basically talking about FHX and FHY. Right in the x direction, the y direction, we're just saying, uh, and then yeah, that's what they want the horizontal and vertical force. So we're just going to sum the forces to do that. I know the sum of the forces in both directions, but starting off with the x is equal to zero since we're not moving, right? Because if they weren't, we would be there would be some acceleration. Uh, but zero is going to be equal to uh, now let's add up the forces in the x. So basically, we're going to have FHX. Right, which I'm assuming points to the right, or I know it points to the right, uh, because f of t points to the left. So we're going to say it's positive, and then we're going to minus, uh, and then what we want to find is the x component of f of t, because everything else is in the y except for the x component of f of t and obviously f h of x. So to find the x component here, you can imagine this like a triangle. Uh, we know the x component would be this side right here, so this x, right, because it's along the x direction. So the way we can find it is by using trig. We know the cosine of an angle, in this case 35, right? You imagine this as a triangle. Cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. The adjacent side is our x, right, our x component, divided by the hypotenuse, which is our f of t, which we just found. We'll say 642.17. Multiplying both sides by 642.17, you get your value for x your x component. So fd of x is this value right here. I just called it x though. Now that we have that, uh, we have our x component there. We know when summing it in the x, uh, f of t is going to point to the left. Therefore, it's negative, right? Because right is positive, left's negative. So we have 642.17 cos of 35. Uh, and then just moving this to the other side, you basically get your uh, the x component or the horizontal component of your Hinge force is just this right here, right? And it makes sense because the only force in the X besides that one is the uh, X component of tension. So they got to be equal because if they weren't, it would be moving. So 642.17 times the cos of 35, you're going to get 526, 526 points, basically just 526. So 526 newtons. That is your FH of X, so the horizontal uh, force exerted by the hinge on the beam. Yeah, so yeah, this is going to be F or 526 newtons. Uh, now for the Y, you would just sum the forces in the Y. I know they equal zero since we're not moving. Zero equals. So we have FHY, right? We're assuming that points upwards. We have the Y component of our F of T, which we got to solve for. Uh, Right, actually, let me just solve for that now. So the y component, to solve for that, I know I'm solving for this side, right? Because this is the y side, vertical. Uh, instead of using cosine, I would just use sine. So the sine of an angle, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is our y. The hypotenuse is just f of t again. Therefore, the y component, we'll call it ft of y, is equal to f of t, move it to the other side times the sine of 35. So this right here is your y component now. Um, and yeah, so putting this into our formula, f t sine of 35, it's positive because it goes upwards. Let me actually just put in the actual value. So it is 642.17, right? Because that's f of t. Uh, and then multiplying it by the sine of 35. Uh, and then now we have to minus the force uh, both of these forces in the y, right? The force due to the sine. So we'll do that. And it's negative because it goes down. So minus 215 there. Uh, and then minus 155 for the uh, beam one, right? So the, the weight due to the beam. And then if I want to solve for FHY now, we have 215 plus 155 minus 642.17 sine of 35. So all I did was move this, this, and then this to the other side. And let's plug it in and see what it is. So 215 plus 155 
minus 642.17 times the sine of 35. So when you do this one, you're actually going to get an extremely small value. So fh of y is equal to 1.66, uh, we'll say 7, or sorry, 1.67 newtons about. Uh, you can round this wherever you'd like. If you want to go to the whole number, you can say 2 newtons. But just notice this force is extremely small relative to the other forces. So this isn't really putting that much force in the y, right, vertically. Right, so this hinge is exerting a big vertical force on the beam. Uh, but yeah, so you've got 526 newtons. This is your horizontal. So horizontal. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and then this is your vertical one, right, since it's in the Y. So your vertical force is right here, 2 newtons or 1.67, however you want to round. Your horizontal uh, is 526 newtons. And then your tension force right, of this uh, wire here, or the cord, whatever they say it is, they say it is a, yeah, the wire is 642 newtons. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to go ahead and be your answers. And uh, just a quick recap of what we did. All we did was sum the torque to eliminate F of H, right, the force due to the hinge, so we could actually solve for F of T. Then it's just a matter of solving for all the torques, summing them, and then solving for F of T. And then I knew I had F of T, so I could just sum the forces in both directions since F of H, their component, its components are the only uh, missing variable. So I could just solve. And uh, yeah, so that's what we did. These are your answers. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful.